Let us pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for being here and being with us. We thank you for this great, that, great day that you have given us an opportunity to gather as a diocese, to worship you, but also to reflect on the mission ahead of us, to bring our united prayers, but also our resources, so that the mission and the ministry you have given us will be able to grow and flourish and be a blessing to many people in this diocese and beyond this diocese. So Lord, this moment you have with us, speak to us your words, words of life. In the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please let us be seated. I really want to begin with an apology that uh, it has taken us a little bit long, but uh, bear with us. You may all recognize and realize this is a special day, an important day for us. As a diocese, it is only once, so just bear with us, we will finish soon. Uh, I want us to begin by thanking all the organizers of this day, the diocesan team, the committee that organized that we all gather to today as a diocese that is in charge with resource mobilization. I want to thank the cathedral team led by the provost for setting the venue and all of us for coming and joining in this great service where we are gathered to mobilize resources for the mission you have had. We also want to thank those who have come to visit with us. We thank God for those who come to bear witness and give testimony of what the work, uh, how the work is happening in their localities. Thank you, Venable uh, uh, from Lodua, who has come all the way just to be with us in this service for their beneficiaries of the work that we do and the mission that we are raising funds for. So I want to say to all of us, may God bless you. Thank you, Bishop, for visiting with us, and Mama from the US, and thank you all for this, this day. I don't want to take a lot of time. Let us go straight to sharing the word of God. Two lessons have been read to us, Deuteronomy and 2 Corinthians. In Deuteronomy, Moses is beginning to lay the reasons and the principles for giving and for tithing for the work of mission and the work of God. And he spells out what people must give. He says it is a tenth of what God has given us. He says it is to be taken to the place of worship so that those who are ministering will benefit, those who are disadvantaged will benefit. And he said three categories. He mentioned the priest and the Levites who own no other property, but they are said they are to be able to minister God's word. He also said the other category is orphans and widows in the cities and in the community, and those who are less privileged, that when you bring whatever you bring to his sanctuary, to God's sanctuary, it will be used for the benefit of those. In the second Corinthians, Paul and the team were busy mobilizing resources for the brethren in Jerusalem who are suffering from famine and, uh, uh, and hunger. And therefore, as they went through the regions, the Macedonian church, which was a very weak church by the standards of the day, knew by birth, uh, and also not endowed with resources, a poor church by the consideration of that day also decided to join in and say, our resources must go to support the brethren in Jerusalem. And in the two readings, uh, we see uh, God putting in the mind and hearts of men at the center of his mission, the urge to resource for mission. And therefore today, I will be talking about the principles of giving. The principles of giving. If we are to look at the principle of giving, two things guide them. Two things guide the principle of giving. One is benevolent giving or giving without expectation, a donation, a grant, something you give without expecting back. The other thing that a guide giving is the principle of giving and take, which drive trade and business. People borrow money and they are given, but to do business with that money, return with an interest, 
and grow the businesses. So those two principles guide giving, that uh, we give either as a philanthropist or benevolent giving where we expect nothing back, or we give so that we grow business that will prosper other people. Now, if those are the, ben uh, the, the, the guiding principles, what then are the benefits and the rewards and the blessings of giving? What motivate giving? Why should we give? We need to ask ourselves a few questions before we can answer those questions. In today's world, the church has a mission, and we have a ministry, a huge one, ahead of us. And we have been asking ourselves this question, which I want to raise a little bit for all of us. What are some of the barriers and the barrier beliefs and assumptions that make people dismiss the gospel or not hear the gospel? What are some of those things that we need to give our resources to tackle them so that the gospel of Jesus Christ can be preached without ceasing? Some can be poverty, some can be inability to move from one location to another, some can be uh, uh, beliefs that uh, we don't uh, entertain uh, what you're calling the gospel. Some are just assumptions. But what are they? The church must discover and understand so that even when we commit our resources, we know how to direct those resources. What are some of the fears, worries, and hurts that people are going through that we, the church needs to address and is therefore needing resources to be able to address? What are some of the fears of our day to day? What are some of the worries? What are some of the hearts that the church need to engage? As we are listening to the people who are from the mission areas in Kibera, uh, people from Lodua, uh, people from Garissa, they will tell us their fears. They will tell us what they are worried about every day. They will tell us what is hurting the mission and themselves in that engagement. But we need to ask ourselves, what is it? But even without going to that area, the church is confronting every day in the mission field with what our bishop said, the fight against Satan and sin. It also needs resources to fight that, even in the cathedral and other places. So we ask ourselves this question. What sins are most evident in us that the gospel need to confront first before we get healed? So that when we are enabling these ministers, we identify what they have to do on a daily basis. How do the world and us gathered here today account for the wrong we do? How do we account for it? And I know we all do wrong uh, from time to time. Either a big wrong or a small wrong or, or what we can call a mistake, you know, we, we normally want to, to demystify and make it so small so that it doesn't create a lot of guilt in us. What are some of those guilts, some of those wrongs, and how do we account them for them? And the church must come out with a strategy on how to mobilize ourselves to account for the wrongs we do. And I presume, and I want to propose, that there are only two ways accepting the wrongs we do, and repenting them. But we need the church to guide us into that direction. Therefore, the mission of Christ is as urgent as ever before. In what ways today are we self-righteous? In what ways do we dismiss the idea of God and try to put ourselves in the place of God? These are the areas in which the church must ask hard questions. And if we are to get the mission of the church right, we must ask ourselves those hard questions. How do we give uh, a supportive uh, response? Therefore, as a church, we are gathered today to mobilize resources because we have a mission out there. And in doing this mission, five things guide us. One, giving is a demonstration of our love and care. We have a duty to love and to care. You can all see the children that were singing here. If there was no church to love them, to care for them, they will not be the smiling children you have seen. I am a testimony as your archbishop. I was once a sponsored child like them. World Vision took me through school, uh, uh, gave me an opportunity to be taken to medical checkups, and fed us even when we had a famine of 1976 and 77, in Narok, when I was still young. That is why you have now today your archbishop 
because somebody's love was put into practice. Somebody's care, a duty of love and care. We are gathered to show that as a church, we can care. As a church, we can demonstrate love. We give, why? Because we give as a response to what God has given us. And therefore, we are gathered to assess ourselves. What is it that God has given us that he requires of us? And the Bible is not short of those commands. One of the commands is, uh, you are, uh, as much is given to you, much is also ex is expected fr uh, from you. So when God gives us much, he also expects much from us. So we give as a response to what God has already given us. We give because giving in the church is to save lives. We give to protect. We give to preserve. And therefore, whatever you bring to the church, either as normal offertory, as your 10%, as your resources, as a special gift like today when we gather them, we are giving so that lives are saved. We are giving so that we protect it, the very life, protect what God has given us to protect and preserve, for that is what God has, has done to us. We give so that we put a smile on someone else's face. That's what we read in Deuteronomy. Go to the cities. Even when your animals, you think they are far away from where you want to go and give, he says, translate them into silver. And when you reach there, again buy the animals that you are going to give and make sure that the orphans, the widows, those who are in need in that city are benefiting from your gifts. Put a smile on someone's face. Can you imagine? What you are going to give today is going to put a smile on someone's face. How will you feel at night when you know at least someone's, smile, someone's face has been put a smile? Did you, didn't you see those children? Were they not smiling? Were they not smart? It is because of you. It is because of you. But we also give to develop. We give so that we learn. We give so that we build the capacity of the church. And we also give to generate more. So in our giving, and the committee will also tell us that, we also divide our giving so that we are able to invest for income generation. So that tomorrow we have some added gifts that are raised from uh, income generated activities that are generating activities that we have uh, uh, initiated so that our giving is even raised to the next level. Those are uh, the guiding principles why we give. What do we benefit from such a giving? We benefit by earning God's blessings. God will bless you abundantly. As you give and someone is given hope, and a smile is, given, is put in that face, they will always be blessing you. The rest will bless us when we give. And therefore, as we gather today and raise our resources and mobilize them, let us be like the Macedonian church. That Macedonian church was considered by the apostles in their own judgment as a church weak to give, without resources or much talents to give. But they themselves said, we cannot be exempted from this noble ministry. This act of giving, we have to participate. And the, 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 the writer says, Paul, they have given because they did one thing. They had one secret. They gave their hearts first to the Lord himself. And therefore, giving gives us an opportunity to surrender our, our, our hearts to God because it is a response to his love. And therefore, when we give by loving back uh, and showing our love to others, then the Lord himself will continue to love us the more. Both these principles guiding P uh, giving have both pros and cons. Benevolent giving, if it is not well thought about, can lead to creating dependency it can weaken the receiver other than empowering the receiver. It can, make, it can make someone say, I will wait to be given every day. But on the other hand, it will put that smile I said on the face of a desperate person. And therefore, as we give, we also need to be careful that uh, the intent of giving and uh, the intent of the giver and the receiver 
must be clarified so that as we give, we are careful not to create dependency or to weaken the ability, but our giving should be empowering. It should be giving someone's hope and making that someone able to give themselves. When I went to Lodwa, I was so encouraged. You know, he said, uh, the, 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 uh, the Archdeacon, we are supporting 34 evangelists, paying them a small amount every month, and uh, a clergy. And you know, we are, we are spending a million Kenya shillings every year as a diocese to pay for that. But them in their own initiative, in Lodwa Town, they have secured the boundaries of that church by creating business uh, rooms uh, where people are hiring as stalls to do business. And they are doing that, six of them. Many of them are completed and they are going for 10,000 shillings a month. So they are going to raise how much? 360,000 a month from Lodwa, not from Nairobi. Is that empowering or disempowering? They are getting empowered. So we are getting very careful to make sure that the receiver is also careful to invest so that we are all growing for tomorrow. For giving that does not care about tomorrow will always make us weak and needing every day. We want to grow from needing to being empowered so that us can also be givers tomorrow. And we are looking forward for a day that the Lord our mission is able to support our ministry engagement. We are not giving as much to Garissa, but we are also supporting them. And this year we want to give them one kick because they are yearning to become a diocese. And therefore, as we give, we want to give in a way that it empowers, not disempower. It's the same with the mission we have in Kibera. It's the same with the mission we have internally. We have a ministry ahead of us. But we must clarify what is the mission. We must clarify why are we giving. We must clarify what is the hope of this giving. And some of the ones that I've just given you examples, like the one in, in Lodwa, are best examples that when we commit our resources to God, when we commit them to the mission of, 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 of Jesus Christ, and when we are careful to invest for more, then, therefore, tomorrow will be more brighter. So we are looking as a diocese how we can become prudent in the management of our resources that uh, as we collect what we are going to collect today, we are going to have a portion for investment, a portion to go to those areas, but we also follow them so that we make sure they invest the load away so that tomorrow all of us are generating resources for mission. May God bless you as you prepare to give this day. May God uh, 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 enable you to give as a response of the love Christ has given us so that we love back to the rest. Let us pray. We thank you, Lord, for your word and we thank you for the encouraging, the encouragement you have given us that our giving is not in vain, that when we give for your mission, many people will benefit. We put a smile to someone's face and they will look for tomorrow with a lot of hope and anticipation. So, Lord, as we begin this exercise, begin with us and bless us. In the name of God the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.